From sharing their traditions to sharing in the national pastime, Vietnamese Americans have become a part of this country. This week on World in America, learn more about their distinctive culture. Get ready for a festive, flavorful, and inspiring time, direct from a little Saigon near you. When eating a fruit, think of the person who planted the tree. It's an old proverb that speaks to the heart of a people. Vietnamese Americans, immigrants and their descendants from the land of Vietnam are now the fourth largest group of Asian Americans. Counted at 1.6 million, the community is a vibrant one, dedicated to life here and the ways of their ancestors. They bring to America a culture deeply rooted in a country of rare beauty. From the Red River in the north to the Mekong Delta in the south, Vietnam spans a fairy tale landscape of lush forests, emerald fields, and quiet seashores. Over time, the Vietnamese people have faced many challenges, including Chinese rule, French colonization, and the ravages of war. Each time, they've turned around to embrace a new age with confidence. In the past few years, Vietnam has opened its doors and now enjoys one of the fastest growing economies in the world. In the United States, many know the Vietnamese Americans for their hard work, positive outlook, and delightful cuisine. Learn more about their experiences and accomplishments when World in America returns from a short break. Now return to World in America. As a people, we've got we've endured so much. Um, you know, the war and refugees, and being uh, you know leaving our country and going all over the world, um, and having to start up a new life. I think that Vietnamese American parents are similar to parents of many other cultures in that. Vietnamese American parents want their children to have better lives than the ones that they had. In, in the general sense, when we talk about Vietnamese American, we think of like successful Vietnamese Americans. They uh, they have uh, college de degrees. They uh, was doctors, lawyers, engineers. The Vietnamese American culture and Vietnamese Americans in general are an ingenious sort of group. Um, we've been able to create a lot with very little. The Vietnamese people share a history going back thousands of years. Their story in America, however, begins just a few decades ago. For many Vietnamese Americans, the end of the Vietnam War was an establishing moment. From 1975 through the mid-80s, hundreds of thousands fled to the U.S. Those who remember the period draw strength from what they've overcome. The first waves of Vietnamese who came here at the end of the Vietnam War in uh, April 1975. There's also the second wave or also the third wave of people who escaped uh, by boats and then people who came to the United States through orderly departure programs. Uh, they were sponsored by their uh, parents or children who come to the United States. A lot of people came here uh, by boat. Uh, they look for the new life and freedom. I think that is the, the big way of the Vietnamese to come to the United States. In the 30 plus years since their arrival, Vietnamese Americans have come a long way fast. From Houston to Honolulu, they work in just about every industry, from fishing to computers. Making it has seldom been easy, 
even for the skilled and well-educated. We have to, to start to accept low-paid jobs. We have to uh, start school over again to learn a new language again. So we have to, to st start from the beginnings. All of our family is in Vietnam. So um, when we left, it was just us and the clothes on our backs. We had nothing. We uh, confront a lot of difficulty when we come here. The first thing, of course, the barrier of the language even for me, like even I study English in high school and college in, in Vietnam, but my accent or my pronunciation it, uh, is not um, catch up uh, enough in the new, uh, new life. When we arrived in the U.S., my dad, who was a, a dentist in Vietnam, he, he did not know English, and so he could not go and get an American dental degree. So he had to go to work at a tool factory. We were born in Vietnam, we grew up there, and we root with the tradition, the culture there. And the second generation, they hear, they uh, learn in school and society on the different thing. And I think that's a gap. If we are not uh, able to chant, to meet, and in the harmony way, it can be um, a, a hard problem. Across the generations, Few things unite Vietnamese Americans like their language. More than one million in the U.S. still speak it at home. Related to Cambodian, Vietnamese is written in the Latin alphabet, rich in Chinese vocabulary, yet uniquely its own. Well, Vietnamese uh, uh, is a, 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 a tonal language and uh, um, it's, uh, so there's it's like a, on a musical scale, uh, each uh, word uh, uh, can be identified as uh, what I call either a high pitch, uh, no, or mid tones, or low tone, or falling. Uh, so in order to, to speak the word, you have to, to sing it or, re or recite it. Cuộc đất bên đàn trẻ gây có người vừa thấy châu cây. It is very unique in the among the Southeast Asian country because Vietnamese or Vietnamese language is the only one in Southeast Asian use the Latin alphabet. In in the home, it is very Vietnamese. Um, uh, we uh, first of all we speak. There are newspapers and magazines and it's in Vietnamese um, in conjunction with English. Because we think that if they have two languages in their mind, they have two minds because they, they are two persons and, and also they can keep the culture of the Vietnamese. My grandma speaks only Vietnamese, so that is how we communicate at home, is in Vietnamese. Um, my parents don't like it when we speak English. Uh, obviously, my sister and I do speak English with each other sometimes, but it's mostly in Vietnamese. One thing about the Vietnamese language in general is that um, we have different forms that you would use to address, let's say, um, an older brother, an older sister, um, someone of my parents' generation and you know someone of my grandparents' generation. And we have different words to refer to each of these groups of people. And so in so doing, it's a very respective language and a respective culture. For us, and even for the second generations, uh, going back to Vietnam or going back to learn the language, going back to learn about Vietnamese cultures here, or the students here to learn the Vietnamese language here, is a way for them to uh, uh, not to, 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 to go back, but to negotiate their, their identities. Sometimes you have to go back to get to the future. Located in the Bowery of Manhattan, the New York Vietnamese School teaches language and culture to children and adults. It's one of many schools in America giving students a chance to reconnect with their roots.
When I came here to the United States, I wasn't allowed to speak Vietnamese because it was still during the war. And so I felt that it was very important for me to bring back my, my native language um, and relearn it so that way I can better understand uh, my people. And when I go back home, I can better read and, and talk to my aunts who don't speak any English. To me, it's very important to um, maintain my culture, and, um, and one of the essential aspects of that is maintaining the language, um, being able to speak to older, uh, or my parents, older generation, and one of my goals as a you know, future parent is to uh, pass the language and culture onto my kids. For the Vietnamese, manners don't end with polite words. As with many cultures, respect for elders is a key virtue. The words that I would use to address an elderly person who I um, revere and have respect for are sort of different in, versus American culture where we use Mr. and Mrs. Always the younger one had to bow in front of elders and uh, we don't dare to look at their eyes or their face. We all wear kind of like got to be low and the hands had to hold like this. I myself, uh, when I, uh, I have children, I also try to teach my children to, to respect um, the elders. Uh, so, this is, but this is a very difficult thing to do uh, to our children because uh, our children is, you know, being uh, uh, grew up in, in, in these cultures. So there is a sense of, of what they call independence and uh, uh, another uh, the sense of individualities or, and also the sense of equalities because we think that we have to, yeah, everyone is the same or equal. But in our culture, we, we have to, to respect the elder because uh, the elder deserve to be respected. In America, Usually when we get married, we move out and we have, we build our own family. But in Vietnam, people often still live in the same house even they get married. One difference between Vietnamese and American culture that came up is that in the U.S. many students go away for college and after college they stay away. Um, they live far from their families. And that's not very common in, in Vietnam. But then again, Vietnam is a much smaller country. Um, so that's one big difference. The second generation or third generation, uh, they grew up here and they uh, adapt the American value system. And at the same time, they have to uh, learn uh, about the tradition of the old culture or of their, their parents or the first generations. So there's a, a cultural gap. One thing we had to accept that they Americans. And uh, for them, they had to, we give them the root to grow, but also give them the wing to fly. And that the uh, future for them. These days, across the country, Vietnamese traditions are finding new life. On the next part of our show, we'll sample their cuisine, take part in a massive celebration, and visit a Buddhist temple. All when World in America comes right back. And now we're back with more World in America. In a quiet corner of Bridgeport, Connecticut, a congregation of Vietnamese Americans reflect on ancient wisdom. The Puk Long Buddhist Temple is led by the venerable Thich Minh Duc and offers worshippers a tranquil oasis. Văn hóa dân tộc Việt cũng là tôn giáo của Phật giáo của chúng tôi. We established the temple in 1997. I come to America, uh, you know, and established the uh, temple after living in America for one and a half years with my family, especially my dad. Phước Long, là một ngôi chùa Việt Nam. The name is of Phước Long. 
um, the meanings of that name is um, you know, we wish everybody happiness and uh, prosperity. Most Vietnamese Americans follow the Mahayana branch of Buddhism. Nearly a quarter are Roman Catholic and a small minority are Protestants and Muslims. No matter their chosen path, many say religion helps them find their center. Đó là chúng tôi muốn cho người Việt của chúng tôi có một nơi để trở về. Religion in Vietnamese community is very, very important, play a big role in Vietnamese community because a lot of Vietnamese people come to America of for there is a political reason too. They own, they left behind a lot of things, uh, you know, um, a lot of family member, the loved one. So when we come to America, religion play a big role so people can come together. cái nhân tố từ con người dân tộc Việt bởi vì cha mẹ What he em. thinking that the generation were born in uh, in America what we try to keep two culture together one is American culture the other one is Vietnamese culture this is very important because um, he thinking that you know um, uh, keeping your language keeping your culture is, is very important in Vietnamese community and religion play a big role in, 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 in that um, uh, in Vietnamese community. We really proud to be in Vietnamese and we um, would like to uh, contribute our role in America society even though we still try to keep our culture our, our language. We also thank you uh, American people and America that give us the uh, opportunity um, to live in a country, um, to open our, our mind, to, to, to have an opportunity to go to school and to get education and be successful in America. For incredible food at great prices, the word around Yale is Pot A Pho. The New Haven restaurant serves popular Vietnamese cuisine with a blend of service and sophistication. It's a balance the management knows well. My name is uh, Buden Nguyen Phuc. Uh, I was born in Vietnam, grew up in uh, Europe, Switzerland and France, and uh, ended up in the United States in uh, 85. My background, uh, Buden, is uh, I come from the royal family. Uh, my father was Ung Kiang, my grandfather was Hung De. We all descend from um, the last uh, um, that dynasty with uh, Minh Min Man. The royal background of the owners isn't the only surprise at Pat A Pho. The restaurant is uh, located in New Haven, Connecticut, near the Yale University. Um, is on Whitney Avenue. Uh, we call the restaurant Photo Pho uh, because we are primarily uh, serving pho. That's our main, you know, Vietnamese uh, dishes. Mainly, you know, when you talk Vietnamese, the people think about the pho. It's the soup we serve. Uh, they have different flavor between no and sour, but pho is the one we eat in the morning, lunch, dinner, and even late dinner. Pho. A Vietnamese classic takes several hours to prepare. A rich broth of beef and spices is garnished with onion and fresh cilantro. Uh, refrigeration in Vietnam is not like here. In U.S., every house have you know a fridge. Why in Vietnam, up to recently, is not you know uh, normal. So having meat uh, or you know dairy product is very difficult. So we are based our food are on the seafood because, you know, as long as the fish shrimp in the water is fresh. So Vietnamese is based really on the seafood shrimp fish. 
Over the centuries, Vietnamese cuisine has evolved to take advantage of a tropical climate. Dishes are fresh, use very little oil, and put a premium on flavor. In my previous experience, the customer doesn't know too much about Vietnamese food. They always put in a big bag with a label Chinese. They think, you know, Asian food is a Chinese. But recently, we've, you know, the, the people uh, travel much more. They start understanding, you know, with the introduction of Japanese, uh, uh, Thailand, and uh, the Vietnamese, they discover the Vietnamese food. Now they know Vietnamese is not, you know, uh, Chinese. So the fur has been served, you know, in a bowl. We eat that, you know, in the morning to the evening. And the served with the bean sprout, we have the basil. The next dish we have the chai yo. Uh, chai yo is a very uh, uh, traditional dish. It's a roll. Um, it's uh, almost the same than you know the Chinese uh, egg roll, but the wrapper are much thinner. Yuya is you know like I say Vietnamese is a blend of different products. Yuya is a salad mixed with uh, you know carrot, lettuce, bean sprout. Now those are the three main you know dishes from Vietnam, and of course you can find many more dishes uh, in Vietnam itself. So in Vietnamese, you know, we say uh, xin mời, you know, that's how you invite your guests to start, you know, the meal. For Vietnamese Americans, the most festive gatherings tend to happen at one time of the year. In Vietnamese, New Year's Day means Tet, and celebrations can last a week. Homes are decorated, new clothes bought, and everybody goes out to visit. Then come the banquets, like this one in New York City. This is then uh, about very cultural and traditional Tet uh, New Year, uh, Lunar New Year. So we're going to have a dragon dance, first of all dragon dance, and also we have a national anthems and all that, but uh, we're going to have a dragon dance, and then we have a fashion show, and a cultural dance, and singers. Tet marks the beginning of the Lunar New Year, the start of spring, and everyone's birthday. Traditionally, the Vietnamese don't acknowledge the exact day they're born, so on the first night of Tet, everyone gains one more year. First, this is uh, considered to be a, a, a birthday, uh, the birthday of the whole, whole nation, because on the first day of New Year, everyone becomes one year older. Uh, and second, this is a day of Thanksgiving, it's like Thanksgiving we have here. Uh, in the United States, it's a day to express our gratitude to heaven and earth and to God, uh, to our ancestors, to our relatives, to our friends, to our neighbors, to our teachers. On Tet, you're bound to see fireworks and a blizzard of confetti. Children get money in little red envelopes. But no Tet celebration would be complete without a whirling dragon dance. Happy New Year! The dragon is a sacred symbol in Vietnam. It's a national emblem, a meditation on the universe, a metaphor for growth, strength, and prosperity. Vietnamese cultures, this is a culture where we model ourselves according to, to some kind of uh, uh, patterns of movements. Uh, the patterns of movements that we are uh, familiar with you know, within Vietnamese culture, we uh, uh, pattern ourselves according to uh, our relationship with our environment, uh, our land, uh, mountain, rivers, the seasons. So we you know that patterns of in and out, day and night, and the pattern, those patterns, we are used to like the patterns of a dance. Never forget the benefits done to you, regardless of how small, is the proverb the Vietnamese often recite. Hardworking, resourceful, and generous with their neighbors, it would seem that it's a proverb that many live by.
with Vietnamese we come here and we uh, very appreciate with the opportunity of the society give us. We try to adapt the new culture. We are in debt and have gratitude to our United States for allowing the, us to, to come here. I hope that like more like more people will get to know the Vietnamese culture and like we can like contribute more to the American culture. American also had a very rich uh, value. Um, I think that they are very kind, they are very generous and um, I think that's why they welcome many people to come here and give them the chance to build a life. Mm -hmm.